G'day Doggies fans, all things Bulldogs, it's the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, all, all things Bulldogs podcast, can't even get that right today, um, I've got Dane back on the line, we've got the Newcastle game, the Revenge, the Dogs with a team with lots of experience, or a lot more experience versus the Knights who have had the same lineup for a fair few weeks, we'll talk about the ins and outs, you'll see the Canterbury side scrolling along the bottom as usual, as well as the New South Wales Cup team. Um, but before we start, how you going, mate? Good, mate. Good. How are you? I'm good. How's your nights going? Oh, they're going good. Five straight, mate. They're going real good. I feel like I need to pull away from the computer so our heads are the same size. I've got some feedback about that. I'm like, <laughs> mate, I need, to, I need to go to the back wall for my head to be as big as yours. Uh, you got to stop eating them cupcakes, mate. <laughs> Can't help it, mate. Um, so they, to me, looking like more than a top eight threat. They're looking like they could do some damage that, out from outside the the top four, um, and still a chance of are they a chance of making the top four? Oh, I don't know. Mathematically, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I haven't looked. Um, mm. what are they on? They're in sixth position. Yeah, they. I guess they. I guess they could if things go their way. I'm not like I said. I haven't looked at at it. The, but, um, the, well, yeah, it's going to be hard. They're three points off the top four, which is Melbourne. Um, yeah. they play the Canberra Rapids, this week. Yeah, and they're the other team that are fighting for that top four. So that's they're, that they're right. Cool that's right. But their four and against is really bad. So they got terrible four and against. Yeah. Um, right, the Knights would have too, wouldn't they? Uh, they're plus seventy four. So they only had one bad oh, okay. game. Yeah, that's all right. That's pretty good. Ten actually. wins, one draw, nine losses, three buys. Yeah, I think the Bulldogs helped them out there. <laughs> Basically, your entire positive is from one game. <laughs> if, if, yeah. if it was a draw, you'd be plus eight. Um, yeah. And we're minus 261, which is pretty horrible. Third worst, first word, third worst attack and the worst defence. Um, we're still well, $501 for the premiership, so there is a mathematical chance. You're telling me there's a chance on here yeah. that we could make the finals and win the comp. Uh, wouldn't that be good? Eh? How good would that be? Well, it means the Knights can't, it means the Rabbits can't win another game. They probably won't anyway. Yeah, well, we might talk about that as well. But God, it's so close, man. Like, no, it's unbelievable. Well, you guys aren't that far out. What are you sitting on? Twenty points. Twenty point seven wins, thirteen losses. Lost two, lost two games. The Roosters and the Warriors. I think we should have won. Um, yeah. And that would mean we'd be nine. We'd be sitting where, where Manly and the Chooks are, or we'd be sitting where. Uh, for a team with that sort of for and against, not going too bad, really. Um, having kick you out, obviously, that was a massive out, and. Um, yeah, no, I reckon, on the whole, I reckon you're going better than what it what it looks. That early start of the season was good, and then obviously things fell apart, but not just for you guys, a few other teams too. Yeah, and, and that's the sort of thing, like the criticism has been horrible, and I understand there's been some games, and you can draw a hard line in the sand, but even some of our own fans are just, and it's their right. They, that's their yeah. right, their opinion. I just think they're a bit friggin' harsh. Um, they, they essentially expect results that historically teams in the same situation don't get, right? Mm. Now, I look at the Rabbits in eighth position. They've had three more wins than the Dogs. Yeah. Uh, well, four more wins, actually, because they've only had two buys. And they're going to have the buy in the last round. But, and they've had a, the Rabbitohs 
probably the toughest draw, um, and the dogs come in pretty close to that. And with injuries, probably definitely on par. So obviously the Rabbits have more depth and more quality in their side, in their top 30, which enables them to to get away with some victories. And, yeah, it, it, sorry, we've gone off track. We've gone off on a tangent here, but looking at the ladder, it just, it just it's mind-blowing to see how close it is. And all these games at the back end of the season, they all play each other. <laughs> this this week, I reckon, is a very, very big week. Yeah. Yeah, we discussed it earlier. But, um, you know, you've got that top four with Canberra, Melbourne. Um, I think Melbourne beat Canberra, personally. I think they're going better than Canberra. I think they're sort of getting a little bit, a little bit stale towards the back end. And then you've got um, the Eels are playing... Who are they playing? They're the playing the Broncos. Yeah, that, that's yeah. a must-win for the Eels. If the if the Eels win, well, that shoots them up, and then you've they got the Rabbits the playing. Eight. Yeah, exactly. You got the Dragons and the Rabbitohs. I looked at the odds today. There's no way Rabbit should be a dollar twenty. Not with the way yeah, they're that's what I'm, and, and that's and that's what I mean. Um, people, well, this is a big week. This is this will this is a massive week in the to sort of determine that top eight. If things go pear-shaped for some teams, that could be their season done. It's a must-win game for Rabbitohs. If they don't beat the Dragons, they might not make the finals because, look, I, I, I will talk about the Knights Bulldogs a lot because I, I think that there's going to be an ambush at, New, at fucking McDon- McDonald Jones Stadium. I was going to call it Marathon Stadium. And yeah, I think the Newcastle man. Knights are going to... I think it's it's not going to go the way it went the other day. And if if they have that in their mindset at all, we're going to pull their pants down. The the dogs I think have got not to miss the Bradman best side best, that they've had on the paddock all year this this week. So there's not no to missing Bradman us. best on the on the fringes as well. So there's a good hole runner, and um, that's somewhere that you guys can target because. He's a he's a big body. You take that out. Well, um, Ponga, he's a very good player. When, when you've got Ponga running at the line at speed and and people are hanging off, then you've got um, Fitzgibbon running in one line and you got Best running the other. And then you go out to your winger, which is um, Marju, right? That left edge is all power and Fitzgibbon's got a lot of skill as well as a back row. He he runs them good lines, especially close to the line. He's always dangerous because he does run them good lines. And then you've got, you said you got best on the outside of him usually, but you don't have him that this week with best. So that's a... Tawala's not the same threat as best, but but I reckon Tawala will go out there and, and do a job. You do a job, um, but again, you, you're missing an origin centre. Yeah, and, and look, Tuala's had quite a bit, of, quite a lot of experience as well. So he's not, he's not someone who's just, you know, he, he's your next in line. He's your next man up, yeah. always. Yeah. So you do a job. He's a good, he's a good, he's an NRL quality player, um, yeah. but probably, you know, he's a he's a fringe player. Um, so let's look through the teams. It's the Sunday four o'clock game. The dogs yeah. continually get Sunday afternoon games. So you've got Ponga, Dominic Young, Gay Guy, Tuala, Maju, Gamble, Hastings. Jacob Saifid has been named. Uh, he had a hamstring injury. Um, yeah. Crossland, Thompson, who's been amazing, Frizzell, Fitzgibbon, Elliot, Kurt Mann, who I think he was one of your best on the weekend. Um, so. Yeah, he's just an effort. You've got these effort players in your team, even Elliot. It's all effort, sometimes too much, sometimes overplays. Crossland, Crossland is, um, is good. He's been playing really good this year. 
He's Crossland. gone to another eleven. Yeah, hundred percent. Different we players this Because Braley is a future potential Origin hooker if he could just not get injured, and Crossland is sort of being like a, a Mister Fix It, but he just. He just plays with so much effort. He's just a player you can't deny. Like, he's just a good player. Brody Jones has been really good. Jack Heverington, I didn't want him to leave the dogs. I love the intent he plays with. And Matt Croker is another one who's... Look, this side and those youngsters are now getting their footing. And and the fact that they don't have... They're not starting regular starters, but they're on the bench means that you've got a lot of experience in your pack. Um, and Daniel Saifidi has also been named at number 22 on the extended bench, and he's apparently a couple of weeks away. So, look, I think there's a big chance that um, Jacob won't play, and they'll probably bring – who would they bring in? Lucas, Hunt, Sasagi, Jack Johns, or Daniel Saifidi. I'm not sure who they'd bring in. Mm. But the Dogs team, as you can see – it's last game was the first time we had Max King, Pangai Jr., Kikau, to um, Preston and Sutton all play together. And this week you're going to add Liam Knight and Luke Thompson on the bench with that, and Waddell on the bench with Flanagan. Like it's it's definitely a, a, a bigger pack that we've, than we've had all season, but a very mobile. And aggressive pack as well. Like, if if the Knights are down a little bit in their pack, um, I'm expecting an ambush. That's what I'm expecting. What's no, your thoughts? I no, I don't think I don't think so. Um, I can see why why you said it. I think the Knights are going too good. Uh, I don't think they were at their best against the Dolphins. Um, they got away with it. But if they get back to the way they were playing, I know you got some outs, but, yeah, their intent the last five weeks have, has been sensational. And they're a oh. team, if they get in the top, and I think they will maintain the top eight, I think they're a threat at knocking some big teams out. Um, you know, once they get on a roll, they're hard to stop. And you've got teams that are going to be in the top eight that aren't playing good football. And Rabbitohs could be one of them. Well, they've got to play the Rabbitohs in a couple of weeks. And I'm expecting Knights to roll them. Um, if they can keep on this momentum, like, I don't think many teams have a chance. You know, they they beat Melbourne. Um, who are a top four team. It was, that was, I reckon that was probably the best victory they had in the last few weeks. Definitely. If they play like that, they'll beat most teams. Um, I've um, from the start of the season, I've rated the Knights. Um, they have a top; they're a top five or six team with their the amount of experience they have across the park. And you know, losing Braley is always a big warning sign, and they lost Clamour. But I think they exposed enough and blooded enough juniors over the last couple of years that they're now ready to they're doing their job. And the Saifidis don't have to. They're not knocking the ball on as much, as have you noticed, when they play. Um, I think bringing more... in Hastings has been a big, a big thing, he's, bringing in Hastings, because he's just he, a solid player. He brings he's calmness, not... too. He doesn't yeah. overplay his hand. He just no. he waits for the defence. There's nothing he, um, wary about him. Nothing no. wary. He just does his job. Um, he, but he's a hole runner, too. He can break the line. and he, Yeah, um, he can. This slides through. It reminds me of Trent Hodgkinson, actually. He's sort of not fast, a nice, uh, a good size, does his job, can kick goals, kick field goals, um, and is actually quite good at just, you know, um, throwing a dummy and just breaking through the line because people uh, think that he's going to pass because he's because he, – and he has a lot of touches too. He has his DNA all over the football. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think if you use it to beat the Knights, you're going to have to attack um, Bradman best side where he where he's missing. Um, kick out through there with his size, someone running off him. That's where I think you will you will get points definitely. 
We'll, we'll kick um, it as the other side. So it'll be Preston, our right edge, which you decimated last time, will be Preston, Karaz, and I'm not sure if it's going to be um, Blake Wilson or the Fox. Fox played right wing last time, and he's a left winger. He played right wing in the first state of origin. Um, he is a left winger, though, but, so, but Blake Wilson, who's come in, is also a left winger. So I think they've gone, okay, the experienced guy moves to the right wing to to make sure we're not, you know, we're not weakening our, our young fella um, by playing him out of position. Um, well, Preston's the same sort of player, isn't he? Good old runner. He's the rookie of the year, mate. And to be mm-hmm. honest, we if we I, I think he every game we've won and pretty much if we've got any points in games we've lost, he would have been the one getting the main points. Every time. He he's been every week, like awesome. like we do a um a man of the match sort of thing, um, player of the round, and Preston's won it like five times. Yeah, and sometimes I'm like, oh, who else can we give it to? <laughs> you know? And there's literally no one else. He's just yeah. consistently a 7.5, 8 out of 10 every single yeah. week. Yeah. I rated him 7.5 against the Dolphins, and someone said, oh, how come you – what, because Preston threw one bad pass, you give him a poor rating. I'm like, he got the second highest rating in the team, <laughs> and 7 out of half out of 10 is pretty good. <laughs> anyway, I thought I was really – conservative with my point scoring but um with my ratings but look i think it's going to be a really good game the knights i rate them as a premiership threat i don't think they um well it's it's hard it's hard to rule anyone in or rule them out because we know that each team is probably one or two injuries away from falling off the cliff if you know what i mean and another team just needs one or two people to come back for them to sort of change the way their season's going at the moment. And it seems so volatile. Like, like with the law of averages and the way this season's gone, you'd expect the Knights are about to fall off the cliff. Um, I don't think it'll happen, but, you know. I hope not. Like you said, there's so many teams, one or two injuries, it's game over. Yeah, I'm just looking at the Bulldogs um, pages. It's payback time, boys and girls. We're fired up. So after this, I'll actually be going on a Newcastle Knights po- podcast. Um, that you won't see in your head, but I'll be ringing in. Oh, well, that's all right. Lucky for them, eh? Well, they wanted to come on here, but I said we've already got the Knights expert. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to have a Bulldogs podcast with two Knights experts versus one no. Bulldog. No, that's not very fair, is it? It'd be like <laughs> the first game. I'll tell you what, you look good in the high definition, mate. My camera is obviously a cheap one. I might, might have to upgrade, but I think the blurry of the screen on my side, the better. <laughs> no. um, yeah, the guy's called Dean Smith. He's a massive Newcastle Knights fan. Check him out. Follow, like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. I'll um I'll share his podcast on the Bulldogs pages as well when I do that later before I go and watch some telly and do whatever else. Um so where do you think it's gonna be won for the Knights? Against the dogs. Where do you think it's gonna be won? How do you th- how do you feel it's going to go down? I think if the forwards can go forward and get them quick play the balls and get you boys on the back foot, I think your defence is still a little bit iffy and that's where they'll bust you through. That's where I think the Knights will get you, is the poor defence. It's that simple. You get the the big boys going forward, let the halves do their job. They like, they should cut through your defence at this stage. Yes, it's got better, um, but again, the momentum is with the Knights. Um, it is. You've just come off a bye. I don't think the bye helped you 
at all. I think you've just started, got got your team back and just started playing good and then the buyer comes in. So that could be a bit of a downer as well. We've got Luke, again, we've got Luke Thompson back this week. So he returned against the um, in New South Wales Cup and went all right. We lost that game, unfortunately. But um, I think I'm surprised Edwards wasn't selected. I'm surprised that um, I thought Edwards did really, really well. He's a young guy. See, we've had some young guys that have had to do a lot of work and bust themselves, and you could sort of see they needed a break. They gave him a couple of weeks break. He didn't really go play New South Wales Cup or anything come back into the side, and you could just see he was running faster, moving better. And and as the coach rightfully pointed out, there were efforts just to chase. Even when the Dolphins scored, there was efforts from players like Edwards and Marnie, which kept the kicks wide in that wind and ended up being the difference to us winning the game. And that's what we've lacked. We've, we've had too many people giving up on the play. Um you know, and, and putting their head down and, and that sort of stuff. And I think that those areas are turning around. I, th- I think they've got a bit of belief and it's amazing what Billy Army kick out. Like, he was enormous for us against the Dolphins. Um, I knew after about 60 minutes that we would open up on that edge because it's him. What he does is he works so hard on the inside. Um, players naturally veer away from him. Which cramps up their attack when they when they run wide, and when he starts to get fatigued, he obviously can't sort of push. He can't sort of show on the sideline as much, and it and they're able to sort of straighten up more and, and have the and have the gaps there and have us sort of and that, and you can see when when he's not rushing up out of the line as well. If you watch the Bulldogs against the Dolphins, you would have seen. Our players like Sutton and Marnie kick out, which their line speed was much better, and they missed some tackles when they did it, but they put enough hit on and enough pressure on that the rest of the team were able to sort of join the fray and, and knock them down. Um, whereas what was had been happening is it is we'd have one player go out on their own. And the other players are too far behind and they just weren't connecting in defence together and and then the player would fall off the tackle and next minute it'd be a gap and a hole rather than um, meeting them and together as a lines. A line speed was a lot better. Um, and I think it's just having that Preston on the right edge, kick out on the left. You know, I, I wish we'd had a few more weeks. I think yeah. you're right about the fact that buyer probably wasn't good timing for us in that regard. But I, I just think that you just think what could have been, you know, two and two at the start of the season. What about Sterling? I'll, I'll, he's, yeah. he's, he's New South Wales Cup. I would have liked to see him play. Who's that? Skelton. Well, Skelton's more suited to the right edge. So he would have been a natural right wing. Um, I think. I think they're a little bit. I don't know if politics comes into it or if they want to make sure he stays in New South Wales Cup so that we're a good chance of winning that and then have him uh, be playing wing, right wing. But he'll he'll be a right, he'll be a centre and and an edge forward by the end of his career. He looks like a centre at the moment. Put him in there instead of Burns. No, I'm well, not, I'm I'm being 100 percent serious. Yeah, I, I know. In there I, over you're Burns not a fan of Brady Burns. And... Oh, he's just well, oh, he can he can do a job when he wants to, but that's rare. Um, what, I don't like he's... knocking players, but he's I've seen a lot. I've seen more of him than you have. Um, and... I've seen a bit, a fair bit of him over the last two years, to be honest. But yeah, and he's. And I was I obsessed with Skelton. the team he come from in 2015. That Penrith side has produced more NRL first graders and origin and international quality players than any other junior side ever. Um, and he come from that team. And the Souths paid big money to steal him from it at a young age. So, Which is disappointing because he didn't kick on because he's made of glass. And I can see why you... 
I think he frustrates you more than you dislike. He does because I can see he's, he's, got the, he's got everything. He's got the the build, the athleticism. He's got it there, yeah. but he doesn't always use it. But then he he'll go and do it, and it's like, well, why can't you do that a little bit more consistently? But no, I think I think you've got more in that skeleton. I'd put him in there. Of the upsides there, and I don't think Burns will be re-signed by the Dogs, even though he's got the Bulldogs DNA with his uncle Rod Silver, who, you know, he's should, coming across from the roof as one, one of the best things for the Dogs at the time. Shouldn't um, come into it. Who? It shouldn't come into it. It's I wouldn't re-sign him. He's a New South Wales Cup player. At best. <laughs> Mate, I've seen him. What he produced against the Dragons, um, he did pretty well last week as well. Yeah, it's just not. I don't think it's he's a New South Wales Cup player. I just think that his body hasn't held up to it, and he hasn't been able to. And look, he's not going to help you when your team when you've got no experience on the paddock. He's a player who need. He's just a player that that you have in your squad, probably like an as as a Tass, same sort of thing. You're not going to pay him heaps of money. Maybe like Tawala or someone like that. You're not going to pay them heaps of money, but you're going to, they're going to do a job for you. And if you've got a good side, if Braden Burns goes play centre at any good team in the comp, he won't let them down. I don't believe he'll let them down at all. But if, if they've got quality yeah. across the park, I think he'll, he done, he'll score he tries. Done the, huh? the team that made the prelims, he done it with the Rabbitohs that made the grand final and the prelims, and they. He was young, but. He, it's only a few years back. Yeah. He was oh, young and he was injured. Like, how many injuries did he get at the Rabbits? He did his knee and his hamstrings. Oh, and... He's always injured. If he's not injured, he's been dropped. Like I said, I just never... He'd come in when we had injuries and he just leak points. Yeah. But then, you it's know... Very dark, the then, then you'd come and play a man of the match sort of performance and it's like mate you are the most frustrating person <laughs> because he's got the size he's got the athleticism yeah. he's got what it takes but it's like he just can't do it consistently well, I, I, think, I, I, like, I like your point about he had some nearly man of the match performances and to me that's what a NRL first grader is um and it's fun Funny, a lot of people talk about Bulldogs players at the moment and there seems to be this um, bias against players on big money that haven't produced value like Tavita Pangai, like Luke Thompson. Um, Burns is only on a small contract, so on an opportunity signing. Um, you've got players like Matt Burton even who's been questioned a lot. And then you've got Flanagan and I sort of go, well, I've never seen – I like Kyle Flanagan. I love his gutsiness. And I love his defence. And I never wanted him dropped from the side at all this year. Um, but then when you come and watch Toby Sexton, Sexton just took the game on completely. He's played two and a half games. And for the two and a half games he's played, we've won, the, we've won two games and we're, we're, I think, four points behind when he got, got um, his nose broken. So – for me, it's about, and he looks like one of the best players in our team on the park, whereas Kyle, unfortunately, has never won a man of the match as a Bulldog, never been close to being a man of the match. He has in New South Wales Cup since moving to hooker, but not in the NRL. And to me, that's the sign of an, an NRL first grader is how can they influence a game um, and, and be a dominant player in their position and contribute to a win? You can have players that can do a job, can tidy up the middle, can tackle, can put in all the effort. But I look at players and I look at like that Crossland, for example. I would have put him as someone that, you know, just looks like a, not a very skillful player but just tries hard. But when you actually watch him, he's actually influencing the outcomes of some of your games by the by his defence, by, by his energy. And he's lifting players around him, like he's having an effect on his whole team. Whereas Flanagan's just never been able to achieve that, unfortunately, at the Dolts. So you um, look at an NRL. Matt player, Burton, though, he wins games. He's one. He's a match winner, and, and for people to say he's not really 
I sort of question that. I, I don't don't get it. He's had some bad games, but he's been the focal point of our attack and sort of trying to do it on his own and overplayed his hand like Marnie. But you know what I mean? So you, so you look at look at it different. So I look at an NRL player and it's someone that is consistent the all the way through. Their bad games aren't yeah. too bad. You know, they oh, have I their good games, that. but they you know, I, I think that that's how I look at it. The consistency. If you've got a player that too. is you can have players that are, are, are great. But their bad games are not that bad. Everyone has a bad game. But then their good games are ahead yeah. of everyone else. Yeah, oh, so well, 100% that, that's agree. 100% agree. Just, consistency and I just is very, with, very important. With the burn side of things, I just think the consistency is not there to be at an NRL level. I think he's well, a New South Wales Cup player because of his consistency and he's made of glass, like you said, literally. I think, um, as I said, I think the, the point on that is that he's – because he's of his injuries, he's unable to be consistent. He's sort of behind the eight ball, and and it's hard for him. But but anyway, mate, we've got. We've, I think we um, agree to disagree on that a little bit. I think I've always thought that he's had potential, but you're right, he hasn't been consistent. And sometimes it's form. I think more so, he just can't too get going silly. due to his. He's just frustrating because of the injuries too to many, me. Too many silly mistakes, especially in defence. Just keep an eye on it. And that's that's if I was Newcastle, that's what I'll be targeting. I'll be going straight down him because you're going to break through. He will run out of the line. He will do stupid things. I've watched it time and time again. So, so with um, the Fox, so, so does all of our team. To be honest, they team teams that are under pressure. That's where that's where you crack. You crack on your wing and in your center. That's where eighty five percent of tries are scored. It's see so if you can get. Players at the moment, familiar with in every each other game, in those positions. In yeah. every game, the second rowers are scoring and your locks. The 11, 12, 13. Every game. Have a look how many times 11, 12, 13 score every match. Against us? Them, oh, every, every match at the moment. Not just against the dogs, against everybody. It, yeah, well, them, yeah, them yeah. whole runners like your Fitzgibbons, yeah. he's, he's one. Preston's another. He's he's in that sort of category. You got Preston. You've got um, kick out given, one on the way. yeah, kick out. He's another one. Obviously, he hasn't played too many many times, but um, you know you're getting constantly these sort of hole runners are scoring. Um, Hudson Young is another one hitting them lines. Just watch through every game. It's them back rolls that are just all the way through. All right, mate. Well, um, look, I think the Bulldogs are a big chance to go well. I don't think it would be a big margin. I think if Knights win, they would have really bloody earned it. And I think they're going to have to go out there and play to the level that they've been playing at. If, if they drop off 1% or two, 1% across their team, if their forwards don't win the forward battle, um. I think they'll struggle. It may just come down to some brilliance from Carl and Ponga or Fitzgibbon on the edge. Um, I reckon, or, I reckon or a cross line with, a, with an effort play. Like it might come down to that. But I think I think the dogs are going to go well this week. And if they don't, it's probably going to um, – it could be destructive to the rest of our season. We've only got four games left. We want to win every game, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um and I think we're a chance of beating – and, look, even if the Knights were to lose to the Dogs this weekend, I don't think it ruins their season. Um, it could be dangerous for their season, but I think that um, they're going to come up against a team ready to spoil their party this week. So that's what I think. When it, um, Thinking about um, your – who's going to make who, – who's going to – Who's going to make the eight? We've talked about this a couple of times, but who do you think is going to win? Who can win the grand final? And who's your smoky? Tell, tell me two teams Obviously. you think that will play the grand final and who's your smoky? I, I'm going to say 
there's two teams at the moment I think can make the grand final. One's the Warriors. And the one that's been sitting, not playing that good of football, but I've seen them turn, turn their form around. And I think if they get back to that form and they can continue, they are a big chance. And I think that's the Sharks. When people wow. look at me and go, you, you, you're stupid. Well, they've got their, they've got some players back now. They've got some forwards back. Um, Interesting point there. Big, big. Um, they, they had Royce Hunt, Hamlin, Newelle, and um, Toby Rudolph all playing together. See, when you've got your your best three props, your best three middles, and you add to that Fanuk and Graham Nakora. Um, well, look, look how well Nico Hines played with them. Different well, players. I think they're. Add McGuinness to that as well. You've got oh. that just gave that gave Nico Hines space, yeah. and, and and what have Souths lost now? They've lost Burgess for three weeks. Totola's out, Sale's out. Yeah. So their best three, they're they they're one two three, three punch are gone. Mate, I'm telling so you now, they're they're they're, they're in big trouble. Danger. They're in big trouble. I I'm, I'm a South supporter, not South supporter, and I'm telling you now, I think Souths are gone. Yeah. I genuinely, I don't know, I don't know if they should beat the Dragons, but I don't know if they will. It, it depends on what team turns up. Yeah. You know, I, I discussed this with you today. They've, their season from the start has been disgusting. From the draw to the buys. Like, when was the last time they played at home? They had um, Perth, Sunshine Coast, Auckland. Now they're going to Cairns, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, somewhere. They're not playing. <laughs> they're home. actually away from home. I think they're eight wins. They're only they've had three wins at home and seven losses or eight losses, and they've had eight wins away from home. So, so they're on the road. They've actually been a lot better than Rabbits, but yeah, I agree. Their draw, they had to play what Melbourne twice, Penrith twice, the Sharks, the Roosters, yes. all to start mm, with. Manly. Um, Manly, and then they, and then obviously had to play weaker teams when, during Origin when they had a lot of Origin players out. Weaker teams like the Bulldogs, and that. Yeah. But um, I don't think you would have beat us on Good Friday if we didn't have a five day turnaround. We didn't lose our winger early. I think we we're in that game. But anyway, we ended up losing what fifty it's, to sixteen. Had players in win. It's a hard one, like that one. Yeah, but then I don't think you get near us if if we played you with even two more players in the, the game that you beat us at. You know what I mean? So you I can... thought we were way better than South that day, but look, oh, I think on, they, there's some, gra- yeah, there's some green shoots. That Duncan who, who got that length of the field try off the kickoff, he's gone ahead and made that same break against um, against the Sharks on the weekend when they were coming home. And look, with eight minutes to go, 10 points down, Kolo Matangi on the second tackle trying to offload and he'd already they wasted so they nearly still won that game that see that's the thing about south is there's still if they can get parity in the middle any sort of equality in the middle they're really good at ice and their opportunities whereas yeah, fella down the wing mate he was away munro oh munro drops the ball cold i think he's going to be a, a really good player i i yeah. I'll look at him as a a player with a lot but you know that's just inexperience and these things happen like it's he didn't have a great game made a few defensive errors um but a young player is going to do that, that. He's young, mate. He, he's young. exactly he's what's his, come, come through all the grades this year like you know what i mean like he's very very green but he will be a great footballer and you know there's I think a few he's little in the right team he's got the right experience around him but South at the moment, without their three big boppers, I think they're gone. But look, okay. even Penrith, right? If Cleary's out, or they Little White, or Edward, or Edward, or Edward, if Edwards doesn't win, play, they can win without them. They can win with any of those players missing, right? They can't One win without their forwards, though, mate. Yeah, they if lose, Leota, lose forward pack. Leota, if they lose Leota and James Fisher Harris, if they lose those two big boys, they won't win. They won't beat anyone in the top eight. They require those two guys to do the job they do. 
And Cleary um, actually didn't have – Len knew what didn't play on the weekend. I think he's injured. So he put Leota onto the bench to give him that impact. Um, and, and they smash Melbourne. Like, they've, got, they've got the depth, though, to do that, don't they? But they do. That's but, the thing. Like Teams like the Bulldogs, they don't have that depth. He's a well, banking on blokes like Kikau. And when, when he got injured, that was – that hurt. Well, Leota and James Fisher Harris, when they come up against opposition forward packs and it and it's on, they they're just too good. They're just too tough. It, it sort of reminds me of the All Blacks forward pack playing um, not so much the team at the moment, but over previous years, they've just been so tough. And mm. it doesn't matter how big the Australian forwards are, they get manhandled. And look, I just think that. It comes down to that. It's the same with the Bron- – I think the Broncos can win. I disagree with Gus on that. Um, it's not a reason to attack his job at the Bulldogs, though. Um, if they the, – the Broncos, to me, have the aura about them again. They've got that speed from their fullback. It, it's like Ponga running that left edge. It's a similar sort of thing. Um, one and the same. They have great footwork, great speed, and oppositions tend to hang back a bit. And then you've got the players running their lines, big big wingers that can come in, really powerful centres, centres who play of energy and don't give up. They're just so fucking good. And it comes down to have Huss and Carrigan. And then you had Flegler to that, Palacia, who would start in any other fucking team, um, and Jensen, who used to start for the, for the Cowboys. Like, they've got a pretty decent and a in-depth forward pack. And now they've brought in a new guy called Willemson who's scoring tries for fun from dummy half. Um, Billy Walters is doing good. I, I think they're a huge chance. I, I can't stand the fuckers. I hate them. But, um, yeah, they worry me. They could win. But if they lose Huss or Carrigan, I think their, defense won't, their, their defense won't be the same. It won't be the same. And, and they will leave points to the best side in Penrith. So, to me, this competition is so close. Penrith any is of the these team teams, eh? Penrith is a team to be, obviously. Yeah. But I just got a feeling there's a team like the Warriors, even the Sharks. It's one of these teams, I think, can knock them out before the grand final. I do, genuinely. Yeah. I reckon there'll be an upset. It just feels well, like well, that sort of season. I think the I think the top you've got Penrith and and Brisbane, which are your top two, and many people will agree with that. So no yeah. no surprises there. But I think the Warriors and the Knights sit next, and then the I would the actually team. agree that the Sharks, with their um having their three having their forward pack all on the field, look they they didn't have Mulatalo on the weekend or um or their fullback. And they put 26 um, Kennedy. points on South. Right? Yeah. So, so they lost two of their outside backs who have been playing all year and one of their spine players. Because they're forward pack. There's a bit of NFL footy going on oh, there. But a few forward passes. And look, South that, didn't they get were, any They were a better team. They, were they a didn't get team. the 50 South needed some 50 50s to win that game. It's and they didn't get it. good enough to, to win it anyway. They weren't good enough. It come and down to the middle. Mistake, one hundred percent. Your middle, your middle did not stand up to their middle. And at the end of the day, once their middle sort of run out of puff because they did exert a lot of energy. Um, but it, it just shows you the sharks with with um, oh, what's his freaking Nico Hines or whoever's in their side in their back line, back line. They're all experienced and skilled enough to do the job and, and put points on if their forward pack do the job people expect their forward pack to do. And, yeah, I, I think you're right there. I think they're a smoky. If I ruled a line through them, but, but seeing the way they went about business on the weekend, you can definitely ch- – I think we're probably going to change our opinion maybe two or three more times before the end of the season because it's been that volatile, some of the results and the way things have gone and with the injuries and stuff. And up and um, down, like some teams look like they're they're playing great football, and then next minute they're getting beat. So, pretty good season. Close. Yeah. 
All right, mate. Pick, well, what, um, what do you reckon? What do you reckon the school will be? Not dogs. I reckon thirty-six, sixteen, Knights. I reckon Bulldogs twenty-four, Knights ten. I've got a feeling. I'm feeling all right. Well, we'll see what happens. You're, you're banking on their defence getting a lot better, aren't you? Well, it's going to have to be a, the best it's been. Well, the only way that will happen is if they don't run at Burns. If they run at Burns, it might get to 50 again. <laughs> All right, mate. Right. Um, that'll be the podcast this week. Um, thanks again for coming on, Dane. Um, enjoyed having a chat today. Um, I hope it's a good game. Yeah, I want the dogs good. to win, but I also have this – I sort of – Always had a soft spot for the Knights. I don't know. When we play them, I hate their guts. But, you know, um, they're probably the team I'd like to see win. Them or the Warriors. I, I think the, the Warriors sort of deserve some success with what they had to endure. But, you know, they'll be the two teams I'll be rooting for in the finals because it, it certainly won't be the Bulldogs unless, War, Warriors unless we win every game and a couple of sides get done for salary cap cheating or something. The only issue I've got is the Warriors may have peaked too early. That's the only concern. Can they sustain their form through the final series? Yeah. I don't I don't think so. That's my only it's, doubt. I'm, I'm really excited about it, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and hopefully I'm cheering on the Bulldogs jersey flag in New South Wales Cup. I think the Knights have, might even – they might even be a big show towards the end with New South Wales Cup as well because yeah. the fact that they've got – such um, pretty much all their players in first grade, the New South Wales Cup teams now winning games. Um, and our dogs have hit it, had a slide, but when, now they're going to get some more experienced players in there. We'll see them build towards the finals as well. All right, mate, thanks for coming on. Appreciate yeah. it. Go the dogs. Good luck, Knights. Thanks, guys. Yeah, mate. See you, mate.